The power of Israel. I want to start off by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh Vashim Yahweh Shah Vashim Rikakadash Laiwalam Yum. I want to give double honors to my elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me sound doctrine. Strong shalom want to you men and women out there doing this work diligently and chiefly keeping the faith, making your calling and your election sure. We're going to get right into it. Um, you got David Lynn, this pastor David Lynn, using verses and precepts trying to claim that you know, the Lord, our God, the power of Israel is for everybody. Right. You know, their argument is uh, he wants, you know, he's coming back to save everybody, you know, and primarily they just want to save Esau, man. They love their enemy, you know. So Pastor David Land trying to use verses to say that the our God is their God, too, which we're going to prove through precepts that he's only the God. He's only the power of Israel, man. Right. You know, he deals with these nations on the left hand side, but in righteousness and in truth, he deals with the Israelites. Right. Who's going to get the kingdom in the end? The Israelites, man. And all these other nations are going to go into captivity. All right. So uh, second address, chapter three and verse uh, 32, we're going to start at. Right. And go through these precepts, proving that our God, Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls God. Right. He's only for Yasharala, you know, um, second Ezra chapter three and verse 32, it says, or is there any other people that know thee besides Israel? Right. This is a question. Or what generation have so believed thy covenants as Jacob? Verse 33. And yet their reward appeareth not and their labor have no fruit. For I have gone here and there through the heathen and I see that they flow in wealth and think not upon thy commandments. Right. So our brother went. And did a test, man, right? He went and seen and looked upon the heathen and and identified that they are wealthy, but they don't think upon the Lord's commandments, man. Verse 34 says, Weigh thou therefore our wickedness in the balance, and there is also that dwell the world. And so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. Right. I'm going to read that one more time. Second Ezra chapter three and verse 34 says, weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance. And there is also that dwell the world. And so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. Right. This is our brother letting us know that what the name of our God only can be found in Israel. His laws, his statutes, the commandments, the people who keep it can only be found in Israel, man. Right. Let's continue on. Verse 35, it says, or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not seen in thy sight or what people have so kept thy commandments? Right. Verse 36, it says, thou shalt find that Israel by name have kept thy precepts, but not the heathen. Right. But not the heathen. You understand who will be considered the heathen? These other nations who wasn't given the laws, the statutes, the commandments. Let's get Romans chapter nine and verse four real quick. Right. These other nations who wasn't given the covenants, the statutes. Right. Romans chapter nine and verse four. It says we can start at verse one. It says, I say the truth in Hamashiach, who the word ignorantly calls Christ. Right. I say the truth in Hamashiach. I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Spirit, which people call the Holy Ghost. Verse two, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, right? Meaning in his mind, right? If going to tell you for who? Verse three, for I could wish that myself were accused for Hamashiach for my brethren, for my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So Yahweh, not Yahweh Shah slip of a tongue, but, but uh, Paul is here letting us know that he's sorrowful in his mind. He wish he can take the affliction for his brethren, for his kinsmen, according to the flesh, man. But we all know that Paul was an Israelite, man. Right. Verse uh, Romans chapter nine and verse four says, who are Israelites? He explained this, who his kinsmen are, who his people are, according to the flesh, according to the lineage, according to his, uh, the sea line. Man. Right. Romans chapter nine and verse four, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption. Right. So the adoption. Is for the Israelites and the glory, right? The glory is for the Israelites getting the kingdom, right? And the covenants, the covenants was given to the Israelites and the giving of the law, right? The giving of the law was given unto the Israelites. What is sin? Sin is a transgression of God's laws. If you wasn't given the laws to begin with, how can you sin against God, right? 
These other nations want to latch on to our heritage and our nationality, but they do not belong here. Right. They have no business in the building of our temple. They have no business with our book in their hands, man. Right. The scriptures right here says the giving of the law was given to who? The Israelites in the service of God and the promises, man. So the promises was given to who? The Israelites, the service of God. If you can, the ones who can serve God wholeheartedly and in sincerity are the Israelites, man. Right. So no other nation can claim to be us. Right. They have to first fit the curses over in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Right? The Lord said these curses shall be upon us for a sign and for a wonder and upon our seed forever, man. Right? So he's not the God of these other nations, man. He's only the God of Israel. Right? He given us the laws, the statutes, the commandments to follow. The promises were only given to Israel. He don't deal with these other nations, man. He'll tell you himself. Let's get Psalms chapter 147 and verse 19. We will read to 20, man. Psalm chapter 147, verse 19. It says, He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Verse 20. He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord don't deal with these heathen, man. He's only in the midst of Israel. He only give a damn about Israel. If we disobey our God, we're going to captivity. These other nations got many gods. He don't give a damn about them, man. He only care about Israel. These nations are like a drop that fallen from a vessel, right? Let's get it. Second Ezra chapter six and verse fifty-four, real quick. Second Ezra chapter six and verse fifty-four. It says, "And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, come we all, right?" And the chosen people, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. So everybody come out of Adam, but also the people who the Lord have chosen come out of Adam too, right? Verse 55, it says, All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. This world was made for Israel, right? The so-called black, Native American and Hispanics. The ones who are slaves, the ones who are constantly paying taxes and tribute to the, uh, to the current Caesar right now, man. You understand? Right, the Lord was made the the Lord, the world was made for our sakes, man. You understand? But verse fifty six, going to let you know. Second Ezra chapter six, six and verse fifty six. It says, "As for the other people, which also come of Adam, yeah, they come out of Adam too. Thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel." The Lord said, "These other nations are spit, man. Right? They like if you gather the abundance of them, He said they like a drop that falleth from a bucket." That's falling from a vessel. So let's say you're carrying a big ass bucket of water, you understand, and you're carrying it up some stairs, or you're just carrying it and a drop fall out. The Lord said that's how He give a damn about the nations, man. They like a drop that falling from a vessel, right? He don't give a damn about these other nations, man. He's in the midst of Israel, and He tell you through countless precepts, man. Right? You got our people wanting to save the other nations, right? They got five hundred one three C, so they gotta right include everybody in order to maximize on profit. Right, but this script, the scriptures is not for everybody, right? If two thirds of our people shall be put to death, so damn sure it's not about these other nations, man. Right? All these other nations are gonna get their judgment. They're getting burnt up in nuclear missile fire, and only a remnant of them will be saved for captivity, man. You understand? They will repopulate in captivity, and after a thousand years, they shall go into their land where they will continue to serve Yahweh Hashem Yahweh and His people, man. Right. Joel chapter two and verse 27. Let you know that the Lord is in the midst of Israel. Here it is right here. Joel two and twenty seven. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and I am the Lord, your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. So the Lord is only the power of Israel, man. That's why the title of this video is the power of Israel. Right. Because he's only our power. He's only our God. He tells you in so many, uh, so many verses, so many precepts that he's only the God of Israel, man. You understand? Joel chapter 2 and verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord, your God. The word your is possessive, right? It stands for something. It means that it's singled out, right? It's You got everybody's stuff and then you got your own, right? The Lord said he's your God, right? Not everybody else's. He says it right here. I am the Lord, your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed, man. We shall never be ashamed because the kingdom of heaven is for us, man. Let's get Amos chapter 3 and verse 2 real quick. Amos chapter 3 and verse 2. It says, 
hear this word that the Lord have spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which are brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities, right? The law was given to who? Israel, according to Romans chapter 9 and verse 4, right? So if the law was given up to us, that means we are the ones who can sin. That's why the Lord said he only dealt with us. We are the only family on the earth that he have dealt with. That's why we are being punished for our iniquities, man, right? We are being punished for our sins against our Lord, right? That's why we're in captivity to these other nations, because we disobeyed our God. He told us in Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 47, since you don't want to serve the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, therefore you shall serve your enemies with the one of all things, man. Right? So he only deals with Israel, man. We're being judged for our shit that we have done against our God, but the kingdom and the promises is for Yasharala, man. You understand? That's it. He's only the power of Israel. Let's get Sirach chapter 47 and 22 real quick. These precepts, man, let you know that he's only the God of Israel. Anybody that's not going through the precepts, don't listen to him. Watch this. Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 47, verse 22. It says, but the Lord will never leave off his mercy. Neither shall any of his works perish. Neither will he abolish the prosperity of his elect. And the seed of him that loveth him, he will not take away. Wherefore, he gave a remnant unto Jacob and out of him a root unto David, man. The Lord only give a damn about Israel. His prosperity shall be unto his elect. You understand? The 144,000 and a large multitude, man. You understand? Israel. The entire nation will be saved in the kingdom, man. You understand? It will be brought back through the loins of the elect. Right? But he will never leave off his mercies, man. To Israel. To Yasharala. All these other nations, he don't give a damn about them. They don't have no business in building our temple. They don't have no business dealing with us, man. Right? The reason why we're in this position is because we deal with these nations constantly, over and over again. Let's get Jeremiah 2 and 5, man. More precepts, right? Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your forefathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? Right? I'm going to start at verse, um, start at verse 4. Right. It says, hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and become vain? Neither said they, where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt that led us through the wilderness, through the land of deserts and of pits? Through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt. And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. You understand? So this is why our people was judged, man, because the Lord brought us out of Egypt. You understand? Brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey. And we defiled it by serving other gods, man. You understand? That's why we're in captivity to this day, right? We're in captivity right now to this day. You understand? For for us to fall in the land, for us to constantly defile in ourselves with these other nations, man. You understand? So uh, let's go to verse eight. We're gonna read to nine. It says, "The priest said not, Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal." And walked after things that do not profit. Verse 9. Wherefore I will plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. Right? Right? The Lord is pleading. Right? The Lord is what? Uh, uh, punishing us and um, chastising us and, you know, dealing with us through these other nations, man. Right? He's whooping our ass because we disobeyed him. All these weaker nations are over us because we disobeyed him. Right? He's our power. So if we disobey our power, then what? That means all these other nations can overtake us, overcome us, because we have no power, right? They have their power. They have their guns, their militaries. Our power is not physical. Our power is the spiritual, man, right? And that's why every time a nation came against us when we had our power, we were unbeaten. But since now our power is gone, and, you know, the, our Lord is allowing them to do this to us, 
this is what you see. You see us getting shot down in the street still in 2021. You know what I'm saying? Still being hung to this day, organs being missing, man. You understand? But he's our God. He's our power. We disobeyed him. He put us in a captivity. We obey him. Guess what? He's going to protect us. That's it, man. Let's get started right chapter 50. He's only the God of Israel. Not, not these other nations, man. He don't give a damn about these other nations. Right? They're going into captivity. Thus saith the Lord. Right? Uh, I'm going to get uh, Sirach chapter 50. And I'm going to start at verse 28. And I'm going to read the verse 29. It says, Blessed is he that shall be exercised in these things. And he that layeth them up in his heart shall become wise. Verse 29. For if he do them, he shall be strong to all things. For the light of the Lord leadeth him who giveth wisdom to the godly. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Right? So blessed be the Lord forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Right? Who was the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding given to? The Israelites. Right? You understand? So if you do these things, right? If you exercise these scriptures, if you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, you shall become wise. You shall get the kingdom of heaven, man. Right? You understand? That light of the Lord. For that light of the Lord leaded them. What is that light of the Lord? Let's get Proverbs, um, let me see, Proverbs 16 to 23. Proverbs uh, 16 and verse 20. No, that's not it. Um, hold on. What is it? Hmm. Proverbs 6 and 23. I think that's it. Yep, that's what I'm looking for. Proverbs 6 and 23. So like it. it says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instructions are the way of life. So that light of the a light of the Lord is leading us, right? The law was given to who? The Israelites, man. So that's what's leading the people to wisdom. The Lord said, This will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, man. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse um five. I'm gonna start with it says, Behold. I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land where the ye go to possess it. Verse 6, keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation, not nations, nation, who is that nation? The nation of Israel, the nation of Yasharala, the princes of power, right? Right. Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Verse seven. I'm going to start at, uh, I'm going to end at verse um, eight. It says, for what nation is there so great who have God so nigh unto them? Right. As the Lord, our God is in all things that we call upon him for. Verse eight. And what nation is there so great? Right. What nation is there so great that have statues and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day, man? What nation is so great like Israel, man? Even in our poverty, what nation is so great? The Lord hath chosen Israel to be a special people, man. Let's get it. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. It's what It says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth, man. That's why the Lord chose Israel, to be above all people that are upon the face of the earth, right? And that's it, man. Psalm chapter 2, verse 8. Let's get it. It says what? Um, this is what the Lord said. It says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Right? That's our inheritance, the heathen, these other nations. So how can all the other nations be saved like Yasharala? Somebody got to go into captivity. The scripture says those who lead into captivity must go into captivity. We've been slaves to all these nations, man. Every last nation had us in slavery. Right? So by the, by the word, by the scripture, let's get it. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 9. If any man have an ear, let us hear. Let him hear. Right? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. That's not a maybe. That's not a might. Revelation chapter 13 verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So that's what shall happen, man. To all those who led us into captivity, they shall go into captivity. He's only the power of Yasharala, man. 
right? He's only the God of Israel. Let's get Sirach 44 in verse um, 19. And we're going to get a couple more precepts. Maybe I'll wrap it up. Sirach 44. Let me see here. Hmm. No, I don't want so right. Even though that's a good point. Hmm. Let me see here. Genesis 9 and 26. That's a good point. Abraham, you know, uh, by his faith, you know what I'm saying? He was justified. Uh, Genesis 9 and 26 real quick. Hmm. Look, right here, it says, and he said, blessed be the Lord God of Shem, right? Of Shem. Who came out of Shem? Right? Who came out of Shem? The Israelites, man. Right? Not the Edomites. The Edomites, they are not the chosen people, man. You understand? They are not the chosen people. Even though they are Hebrews, they are, they are Hebrew Edomites. We are Hebrew Israelites, man. Princes of the power. You understand? We are blessed. We are blessed because we have the only living God, man. Let's get Malachi real quick. I think we're going to wrap it up after this one. Malachi chapter 1. And we can um, read from uh, verse 2. We can read the verse 3. I mean, verse 2. Let's see here. Because he loved Israel, man. It says, uh, Malachi chapter 1, verse 2, I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob. Right? That's it right there. You understand? Jacob is the progenitor of the 12 tribes of Israel. He had 12 sons, and those sons had kids, man. Right? You understand? And he's the God of Israel, man. He's the power of Israel. That's it, man. That's it. Let me see what Joshua 2 and 11 bring out. That's what's on, me, on my mind right now. Joshua 2 and 11. Right? 2. Let me see. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, Psalms 47 and 4. Here it is right here. Okay. Um, we can start at verse 2. We read at verse 4, right? It says, For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. Verse 3 He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. Verse 4 He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Salah. Right? All these nations shall be under our feet. Right? That links up with what? Revelation chapter 13 and verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Right? The scripture says, Psalm chapter 47 verse 3, he shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. Somebody got to go into captivity. Right? And, these, uh, and it's these other nations. You understand? They cannot be saved, man. Like we're going to be saved. You understand? A lot of them are going to be burnt up in thermonuclear fire. And the remnant of them shall be saved for captivity, man. You understand? That's what shall happen to these other nations. They're going to serve you. How about Shemi or Shah? Or they shall be broken into pieces with a rod of iron, man. What's that? Psalm chapter 2 and verse 9. Right? The Lord said he shall choose our inheritance for us. What's our inheritance? I brought it down in Psalm chapter 2 and verse 8. The Lord said, ask of me and I shall give you the heathen for your inheritance. Right? So they will be our inheritance. They are our inheritance, man, for them to go into captivity. We are inheriting them, man. You understand? It's like they are our, our wealth. We don't have money right now because our wealth is walking around thinking they, thinking they better than us, man. The Lord called them our inheritance. Right. Just like a parent to leave an inheritance for their kid, like a big stash of money or something. We don't got the stashes of money or none of that shit. The Lord let the Lord provided nations for the children of Israel for an inheritance. Man. So every time you look at these other nations, look at them as a cat, as your bag, man. That's a bag. 
Every time you look at them, because that's the Lord telling, he already said, this is this is our inheritance, these other nations, man. So every time you look at them, that's a bag. You know what I'm saying? For real, he will subdue all of them under us, man. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the, ex the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. He only loved Yasharallah. He only dealt with Yasharallah. Hopefully through these precepts, it lets you know that he's only the power of Israel. He's only the power of Israel, man. I don't care what nobody say through the precepts we get understanding. Therefore, we hate every false way, man. You understand? If people are not talking according to these precepts, according to the scripture, according to the Holy Spirit, then don't deal with them, man. That prosperity preaching shit is over with. That slave plantation shit is over with, man. People read now. You understand? The scriptures tell us how to link up precepts. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Say precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, and here a little, there a little. That's how we unlock this puzzle, man. You understand? Don't listen to anything. Don't listen to Pastor David Lynn. Don't listen to anybody that's telling you these nations can make it, man. For all the shit that they have done to us, they shall not make it. They shall go into captivity. You understand? They shall be subdued under our feet, man. Hopefully this was edifying. I want to end it by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah Ba'ashim Rechachadash La'ewolam Yom I want to give double honors to my elders once again of Great Millstone for teaching me sound doctrine. Strong shalom to you men and women out there doing this work diligently and making your calling your election sure. Chiefly keeping the faith. Stay strong. Keep going, man. Don't let your sins weigh you down. Keep moving, Yashara. Shalom.